Welcome everyone to the ATS Innovation Centre here in Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. This is one of three locations we have globally to support innovation, a new exciting initiative that we have. Come on in and let me show you. Our goal at the ATS Innovation Centre is to take your ideas, our customers' problems, our employees' issues and our partners, bring them here and let them come to life on our floor. From there we go and launch into many creative ideas. We're a team of 40 people now working across the organization. It's a huge team, but it's complemented by many of our other employees. We have over 15 to 20 employees every month participating within the innovation initiative. There's a lot of activity going on. What makes it really different here is we're trying to establish a different culture. A culture where not only do we work on new initiatives and cool technologies, but we're allowed to fail. We're here to solve problems. We can't solve those problems on every project, but we can in this innovation place. And that's our goal. Failure breeds true innovation, not just new technologies. We want to take the innovations that are developed here and not keep them here in a box. We want to bring them out onto the shop floor. We want to bring them onto projects where they drive value for ATS, but more importantly for our customers. Again, our job here at ATS is to solve your problems to help bring value to you as an organization, to help grow your business as well. We don't want to just take technology that exists today and apply it to a problem. We want to invent and accelerate something new and exciting. So I'm going to introduce you now to some of the employees that have been helping us with some of these innovations and let them tell a little bit about their stories. So the Super Truck Farm is quite uh, unique because it does allow us to provide an asynchronous uh, processing method. So we are able to process uh, you know, partial pallets, full pallets, or multiple pallets at once if we want, and currently there aren't very many other options for us to be able to do this in this, in, in this environment. It's really exciting to see the new products that we're developing because like there's so many new things that are down here that are just, you know, they're, they're crazy ideas that you know, I never would have thought of myself, so it's really cool to see what uh, other people are thinking of and what we're actually trying to accomplish here. You really get your own freedom to do whatever you want here and uh, yeah, you're free to let loose and be as creative as possible. Some of the risks that we take in here, we couldn't afford to have that on a job, right? It would be a disaster. Um, some of the failures we've had here, um, you know, I, I don't want to pump up failures at all, but uh, we, we're allowed to fail here. So flex feeder, um, it's all about getting the parts out into a field and it just it's, think of a roll of a dice you throw the parts out into a, a field the overhead vision usually uh, looks at the parts determines which ones are in the right orientation for a robot to pick them and it picks them and places them to the tooling there's, lo there's lots of really good stuff going on here for uh, for a small team customers might come to us and they might identify a problem uh, that they need a solution to and then we go about trying to figure out solutions. They'll do like testing to, to see if they can actually do what the customer wants us to do. Studies, all sorts of stuff like that. You can do 3D imaging and you can do 3D like simulations and all sorts of stuff like that but when it comes down to it and you build the machine it doesn't always work the way you think it should work on a computer. Uh, there's tons of variables that are outside of our control that we can't simulate. It's about a lot more than just machines. It's about how people interact with data, people's conception of data, people's um, ability to understand data problems and, and consume and digest those and then have some kind of actual clause. So right here we're looking at our product. It's called Insights. It's built in within the Illuminate product. So right now uh, what we're looking at is a quick dashboard of all our equipment the type of insights, the type of description, the time it happened, as well as roles and impact scores. Impact scores are typically determined by the criticality of the event itself. The idea here, and I'll pull up one of these as an example, Illuminate is constantly trending tons and tons of data in the back end, uh, but it's just too much data for one person to consume. So our product today takes all these data points, we'll uh, essentially log and uh, trend each one of those data points through a time series of events, and then provide analytics as I'm showing here today on my screen. 
The thing with these trending uh, components is not only do we are able to actually trend those components and those faults and those errors within a machine, we're actually able to articulate in a dynamic way to show when those faults happen, how often they happen, as well as what the previous baseline of those faults were with a direct idea of exactly what uh, tag, target, um, fault, reject, or station is causing that problem. The benefit of that now is that we're trending at any given time, we could be trending close to 60,000 parameters at every second. So uh, what happens now is that we only pull out the outliers and present those to the operator, which truly articulates what's happening with the machine and allows them to focus on the problem at hand. 